Is that it? Yeah. Two, three, and four? Right, okay. Am I doing them? Number two. Will I do it? Will I put up the answers? That's a good idea. Right, 22.4. So, 22.4. Here we are. Right, numbers. Two, three, and four. Okay, so that's it, yeah. Well, are we good? No. no. Are we good? Yeah. I'll correct it. No, another minute. We good? Yeah. Right, okay. Anyone need me to do two part one? No. Two part one. Two part two. Two part three. No. Two part three? Right, okay. Two part three. So two part three is this. Okay. This is 58 degrees. Okay, reduce this. This is 12. This is X and this is my right angle. So I have three pieces of information there. I have right angle 58, X and 12. Step one, label. Okay, so 12 is the hypotenuse. Okay, 58 is here. So this means this line is beside 58. So that means X is opposite 58. They're your labels. Okay, then you have to write down Sokotoa because you have to decide which ratio you're going to use, sine, cos or 10. Okay, so when you have the angle, that means you know sine of the angle, you know cos of the angle, or you know ten of the angle, right? You told what the hypotenuse is, so you know h, it's 12, and you're looking for the opposite. So I'm looking for O, and I'm looking for O. Okay, so you look and you say, right, I want to use the ratio that has two ticks and a question mark, so which one am I using? Which one am I using? You can see, sine. So you're using sign, two ticks and a question mark, okay? We don't know the adjacent. We have no interest in finding out the adjacent. They didn't ask me, so I'm not going to do it for them, okay? So that means cos is out and 10 is out because they've got an adjacent. You could use that way if you want, if the two ticks and the question mark is confusing for you. Use, rule out the ones where you've no interest, you don't know and you don't want to know, right? So a sine of the angle, so a sine of, it has to be sine of 58, is equal to O over H. So that means sine of 58 equals O is X over H, which is 12. Right? And then you cross multiply. Put that over 1 and we cross multiply. So that's top by bottom equals top by bottom. So 1 by X equals X. And across the other way, I have 12 multiplied by sine 58. Now I did bottom by top equals bottom by top. It's the same thing, right? Okay, into the calculator with that, press equals and round it up to one decimal place. And your answer is, anyone? 10.2? 10.2. Is that okay? Right. 
and sometimes they give you units as in they'll give you centimeters or meters but they didn't in this case but if they give you units i must give them units back but they didn't tell me any units so it's fine right questions problems yes say that again well two of them will never have a question mark but sometimes you might have two of them that have two ticks and one question mark. Yeah. And then you can use either one. Doesn't matter, you'll get the right answer. So for example, if um, this one, just say I knew the adjacent as well. Okay, here, right, okay. Sign has two ticks and a question mark. 10 has two ticks and a question mark. I can use either sign or 10, whichever suits, whichever I prefer, right? Whichever one I choose, I'll get the same answer. Okay, is that right? Okay, that's number two. Right, three. Three part one, anyone? Get three part one wrong? Three part two. Three part two. Right, so three part two is here. This is 48. This is 15. And this is X. Step one, label. So this is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the uh, right angle. This is the adjacent because it's alongside 48. And this is the opposite because it's far away from 50, 48. Is that okay? Then you write down Sokotoa. So again, you know the angle. So that means you know sine of the angle, cos of the angle, and tan of the angle. Okay? You know the adjacent, so I know A. Right, okay, and I'm looking for the opposite, so I put a question mark on O. I don't know the hypotenuse, nor do I want to know the hypotenuse. Okay, so which one am I using? 10. Because two ticks and a question mark, I'm using 10. So it has to be 10 of the angle. So it's 10 of 48, and the formula is here, O over A. So fill in O and A. So O is x a is 15 and then you cross multiply so put that over one one by x is x 15 by 10 48 is 15 multiplied by 10 48 into the calculator press equals and rounded off number three was rounded up to one decimal place again okay so answer 16.7 Right, and again, they don't give me any units, so I don't have to give them any back. Are we okay? Right, that was three part two. Anyone for three part three? No? Okay, four part one? Four part one. Okay. So, four part one. Funny enough, is a right angle triangle again. Okay? So right angle triangle, here's my right angle. This measures three, this measures five, and this measures A. So I told you these were like the ones we were doing two days ago, which was probably Friday. Okay, so we did these type of ones on Friday. Step one, label. So this is the hypotenuse, this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent. Okay? Then you write down Sakatoa. This time I'm trying to find out the angle. So that means I'm trying to find out either sine, cos, or 10. Which one am I using? I haven't a clue yet. Right? I know the opposite. So I know O and O. And I know the hypotenuse. So I know H and H. So I use the one with the two ticks and the question mark. Which one am I using? Sine. Okay? So it has to be sine of an angle, so sine of the angle A equals O over H. So that's the formula, O over H. So sine of A equals O, which is 3, H is 5. Is that okay? And remember, this is the one where you're missing the angle, so we don't cross multiply here when you're missing the angle. What do you do when you're missing the angle? You do shift and sign 
and three fifths and equals. So how do you know to do that and not to multiply? It's when you are missing what? When you're trying to find out the what? The angle. So if you're missing a side, you cross multiply. But if you're missing an angle, you shift and whatever the ratio is, shift and cause, shift and sign, shift and 10, whatever's written here. Shift that three fifths on the calculator equals, and they said round it up to the nearest whole number. Has anyone got an answer for me? 37 degrees. You don't need to put the degrees, but it's no harm. Right? Okay? Are we good? Yeah. Four part two? You're probably able to do four part two and four part three now that you've seen four part one, are you? Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so do you want me to do them or not? Yeah. Ha have another go at them tonight. Okay? Right. Okay, so I'm sticking with the same the same um, section, okay, I'm just doing more examples and I'll show you what's different about my example when I get there. So what example did I finish on yesterday? Um, example? Three. Three, so I'm on to four, yeah? yeah? Okay, so I'm on to four. Right, so example four is, um, wait until I get one. That done. Hang on now, if I find one where I'm right, okay. Right, here's one. This is eight, this is X, this is thirty two. Okay, so that's 32, if you can't read it, 32 X and X, X and 8, is that all right? 32, that reads 32, that reads 8, that reads X, okay, with me? Right, same step one, we're on the same section, so method is the same. While I call X, H, H. while I call H, H. A, so that leaves me with O, okay? Then I write down Sakatoa. So girls, I know the angle, so that means it's 32. So that means I can get sine 32, cos 32, 10 32 in my calculator. So I know sine, cos, and 10, okay? I know the adjacent, it's A, so I know A, so I'm ticking A. I'm looking for the hypotenuse, so I'm putting a question mark on hypotenuse. They didn't tell me O, they didn't ask me O, so I'm not going to tell them, okay? Which one am I using? Cos. Okay, so I'm using cos. So it has to be cos of the angle, which is cos of 32. And the formula is A over H. So that means cos of 32 equals A is 8 and H is X. Now, this example is different to the ones we've been doing. Why? The X is underneath the 9. In the, all the other ones, if you look back in all the other examples, the X was always on top of the line. When the X is on top of the line, you cross multiply, right? Now, when the X is below the line, you can cross multiply, but you'll end up dividing again, okay? So here's the shortcut when the X is under the line, right? So I'm just going straight to the shortcut when the X is under the line, okay? When the X is under the line, just swap it with what's over here. See what's over here? Cos 32. So swap the X and the cos 32. So put the X up where the cos 32 was and put the cos 32 down where the X is. Is that okay? Right. When do you do this? When the X is under the line. When the X is under the line, you just swap them. When the X is over the line, you cross multiply. And when you're missing the angle, you go shift and sign or shift and cause, right? Okay, so there's kind of three types of ones. When the X is above the line, cross multiply. When the X is below the line, swap them. And when you're missing the angle, it's shift and sign cause or 10, right? Okay, 
Is that right? So there's three types of ones. Got it? Okay. Into the calculator with this. Now, for some reason, girls, you know the way the, when you put in cos 32, it opens the brackets. And normally it's fine if you don't bother closing the brackets. But when it's underneath the line, the calculator will give you an error message if you don't close the bracket. So will you close the bracket on the cos 32 and round it up to the nearest whole number? Nine? Right. And again, they don't give me any units, so I don't need to give, give them units back. Right. I'm going to do another one of those. And I'm going to... Did you all get nine? Is that okay? It's the right answer, is it? Right. Oh. What is it? 9.4? Yeah, it said it correct to the nearest whole number, which would be 9. Is that okay? Sorry? You press cos 32. You press cos 32. And if you look, the calculator will automatically put in a bracket for you, isn't there? Isn't there a bracket before the 32? Yeah, you need to close it, because if you don't put the close bracket on it, if you don't, it'll give you an error message. Am I right? Did anyone not close it and you get an error message? Try not closing it and you'll get an error message. I think. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Are you good? Yeah. are you good? Yeah. Right. Okay. Example five. Right, okay, so, um, right, okay, so here we go. So this is 30. This is 8, and this is x, and this is my right angle. Okay? So, again, the question is find x. Okay? So, that reads 30, because if it's too small for you, down the back. Right? Opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse. This is the hypotenuse. What I call x? Adjacent. Adjacent. And that leaves me with opposite for 8. Okay? So then you write down Sokotoa. Sokotoa. Okay? So I know the angle, so that means I know sine of 30, cos of 30, ten of 30. Well, I don't know, but the calculator does, and that's the important thing. Right? I know the opposite, it's ease, so I'm the opposite, I know the opposite. I'm looking for the adjacent, so I'm going to put a question mark on the A. So which one am I using? Ten. Okay, so 10 of the angle is 30 equals O over A. So 10 of 30 equals 8 over the adjacent is X. When the X is underneath the line, what do I do? Swap them. Okay, so put the X up where the 10, 30 is and put the 10, 30 where the X is. And into the calculator and we we'll round to one place of decimal this time. One place of decimal. S to D is. 14.4. Oh, yeah. um, oh, no, 13.8. 13.8. We'll go to one place of decimal this time, I said. Right, okay. Thanks, 13.8. If I said to the nearest whole number, you would have got full max. Right? Are we good? Oh, sorry. Yes. It's 13.9 because it's 13.8. 13 13.85. 8. 8. 8. So that should be 13.9. Okay? Sorry, I confused the first person because they thought it was the nearest whole number. Are we okay? Yeah. Right? Questions? Right, okay. I'm going to uh, give you um, a mix of these now for homework, okay? As in, sometimes the X will be above the line, 
Sometimes the X will be below the line and sometimes you're missing the angle. Okay, so there's three types. When the X is above the line, cross multiply. When the X is below the line, swap. Right, and when you're missing the angle, it's shift and sign or shift and cos. So there's three types of questions. Are you with me? Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm going to give you a load of these, right, okay, and you've 15 minutes left, so you've loads of time to get us started. So page 509 to 510. Okay, let's go with, um, you did up to four, so let's do five. Um, I did six there, let's do seven. Let's do nine. And have a go at number 10. In number 10, there's two, there's two triangles in one. So you have to decide which triangle to work in first. And remember, you can only work in a triangle if you have three pieces of information. That's all I'm saying. So I'm leaving 10 as a challenge to you. Okay? So five, seven, nine, and 10. And I'll put up the... Um, I put up the uh, pages now.